Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Adventure. names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. The thing to consider when you've got to sleep is the bed not narrow, is the pillow deep. And you wake up in the morning, breakfast in Havana, with cereal do they serve a fresh banana. I offer this suggestion so that you will know that if you're ever in Havana, the place to go is a hotel known as Shannon's Place. Nice bed for your body, good food for your face. <laughs> That's a philosophy that should be spread around, King. True, Lady Sailor, but uh, in Shannon's place tonight, there are not many philosophers. You turn on the neon side outside, King? Yes, Mr. Slate. Are uh, you happy now, Sailor? You convinced me to put up a neon sign out front. You said customers would flock to the place. How do you like that? A new neon sign with the biggest arrow in Havana. King, go out and make sure that arrow is pointed in the right direction. You'd better do it, King. We're too close to the harbor to take chances. There'd be a lot of wet tourists if... Here comes a dry one. Yeah. Looks warm, too. Hello. I'm looking for Mr. Shannon. I'm Mr. Val. I handle his business. Is there something I can do for you? Oh. I'm Slate Shannon, Miss... Uh... Mrs. Ramsey. I've heard you have a boat. That's right. The Bold Venture. And I've heard it's for hire. With me in it. I'm cabin boy. I'll give you $200 to take us to the pot of swamps. My husband owns a tobacco plantation there. There'll be my husband, me, and Dr. Barton. Sounds all right, doesn't it, Sailor? I don't know. Mrs. Ramsey looks like she hasn't finished talking yet. There's only one thing more to say. My husband always wished to be buried on a hummock in the potter. See? I told you to listen, Slate. My husband's in a coffin. My husband's dead. <laughs> Doing in our room, Glenn? Your husband invited me. He got lonely waiting for you. Asked me to play cribbage with him. I did. His favorite game. The game for the old. Where is he? Asleep in the next room. It was too much for him, the game, being without you. He tires easily these days, doesn't he, Alice? That's a wise observation, not a doctor's. You always refresh my reasons for adoring you. Thank you, Glenn. The way you keep calling me doctor... When you knew I was branded for malpractice, the way you let me pretend to the natives at the plantation, the times you've let me put my hand on your lips. Thank you, Lynn, for saying it so gently. Well, it's all arranged, Mr. Shannon agreed. I made a condition, though. What was it? That my husband would be dead. There's a knife in the desk drawer, Lynn. Would you get it for me, please? Anything you ask. Here, Alice. Thank you. He died quietly. You're a doctor, Lynn. Take care of the details. I don't want to keep Mr. Shannon waiting. <laughs> Is it 
harder, Mr. Shannon. Well, that's the Isle of Pines, right off the starboard bow. About an hour more. Is Mr. Val able to handle this boat, too? Uh-huh. She'd rather sit on the forward deck and talk to Dr. Barton now, Mr. Shannon. Do I bother you? Talking to you like this while you're steering? No, go ahead. Talk. The thing that bothers me is that all this time you haven't said what I wanted you to. I don't understand. Well, it suddenly occurs to me that you're a widow. Yes. And you don't grieve. My husband was an old man. I'm sure he's been given to him his life. Was he ill for very long before he died? Well, he died suddenly. I put a knife in his heart. <laughs> Yes, that'll do it. We're going back to Havana, Mrs. Ramsey. Oh, no. The reason for not going is in the back of your head. It's only a small gun. Well, as long as it's a little one. Cut your engines, Mr. Shannon. Do it. Thank you. Please, after me. What's the big idea of turning off your engines, Clay? The customer's always right. Look over my shoulder, sailor, and see what you can see. Don't bother, my dear. Mrs. Ramsey is holding a gun at the back of his head. Are you ready, Lynn? Yes. Help him, Mr. Shannon. With the coffin. It's heavy, so it will sink. You can lift an end of it. Now, carry it over to the side. If you're a sea captain, Mr. Shannon, would you like to say a few words? I'm sorry for him. And so are we all. Now give him to the sea. Take us to the pattern, Mr. Shannon. I can make your life on my plantation very pleasant, Mr. Shannon, Mr. Val. You'll see. What more could we ask for, Slate? A home in a swamp, jungle drums for dinner music, a hostess with her husband in the deep blue sea... What more? Ah, uh, we're living, baby. For as long as you wish it. Oh? You already picked out a couple of hummocks for us? Make mine with camellias. What's a hummock? A mound of dried earth in the part of swamp we bury our dead in them. As long as Sarah and I behave ourselves, no funeral parties, huh, Alice? Exactly. You're to make no attempt to tear yourselves away from me. No attempt to communicate with Havana. Nothing gained, nothing ventured, I always say. What? <laughs> well, don't let it throw you, Mrs. Ramsey. Sailor learned that making daisy chains at Vassar. Please, understand me, you two. I murdered my husband because I like it without him. I won't have it spoiled. Don't try to escape from me. Because all it will bring you is an ugly dying. I like it the way Sailor said. How's that go again, Sailor? Nothing gained, nothing ventured. There's more to it, but I forget. Senora Ramsey. What are you doing here, Swigger? Get back to your quarters. The drums of my people... They have not made you wonder, senora. Where is Senor Ramsey? How did you know? How could you know anything like that? To us, the natives. To us, the workmen. Such things come on the black wings of a bird. In the sound of sand washed by the sea. Our master is dead, senora. Because he was old... Because you had hate for him? No. She killed him. That one standing there. Hey, what is it? She killed him, put a knife in him, out of jealousy, out of rage. Believe it, Fuego, believe it. Calm yourself, Senora Ramsey. She's crazy, Fuego. She's got... You, too, must bring calm to yourself, Senorita. Or if you have killed our master, you are forever the child of Zapata Swamps. You think you can get away now, you two? Try. Try. <laughs> you know what else they taught me in girls' school, Clay? They told me the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. They were joshing me, huh? No, sailor, that's on the level. The well, shortest distance between the house and the boat was a straight line down the pier. Why didn't we take it? Remember Fuego, the bitter native? Made a lasting impression. I got a feeling he and his boys would have spotted us walking hand in hand down a moonlit pier. 
There's a footbridge over the swamps. We cross it, cut back along the coast of the pier, get the boat. Hmm, you dribbled a crystal ball, and that's what you came up with, huh? Well, the doctor told me about it. Laughed when he told me. I wonder why. No, oh, he's a chuckler, that one. Wait. Ah, there's the bridge, sailor, through the clearing, just like he told me. Now you know why he laughed. Yeah. On well, this step, sailor, and we land in the swamp. That stuff pulls you in up to your shoulders, closes your mouth. No swamp's going to do that to me. After you, kid. Yeah. Why do you always pick on me to be brave, sailor? It sways, doesn't it? I said it sways. Well, don't talk. You might say a heavy word. Yeah, you can talk now, sailor. We made it. You and your foot foot. What kind of talk is that? Something in my shoulder, Slate. It stings. It even hit. What? Let me have a look. Dot. Native dot. I'm going to pull it out. Hold on to something. You'll do. Oh, oof. Colorful, isn't it? Colorful feathers. Colorful... Hey, that color is me. Come on. We're going back to the house. You crazy. I'm all right. Just a pinprick, that's all. Natives have a way with pinpricks. I'll carry you back. Take the office, sailor. If you don't, you may never hear it again. You did exactly right by bringing her back here, Mr. Shannon. How do you feel, sailor? I'm all right. It's only a scratch. We should have cleared out while we had a chance. You know, you might die from that scratch, Mr. Van. Slate, do something about her, will you? You sure you feel all right? Sure, I'm sure. I've had worse jabs than this from the sewing machine. She's just trying to frighten us with all this. I'll get it. For the lady stranger, give it to her. Has Native come to apologize? He brought this for Mr. Van. It's just what I need to cuddle up with. A rag doll. Let me see it. Throw it away, Mrs. Ramsey. Slate, why? Because the rag doll looks like you. Because there's a pin stuck through it. So what? Maybe it was made by a forgetful seamstress. Voodoo, sailor. Doll like that means... Oh, forget it. It means death. <laughs> Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall, and the second act of our story. Look, Doctor, just paste the bandage on me and go away. Slate will take care of your bill. <laughs> Alice will take care of it. He's a chuckler, Slate, I told you. I don't worry about it. Don't worry about a thing. Excellent advice, Mr. Shannon. I couldn't have given better myself. Then you mean Sailor's going to be all right? Did I say that? What are you building for yourself, Doc? You think I'll make good copy for the medical journal? <laughs> What's the laugh? They might name a disease after me. Because in your medical circles, my diagnosis would be worse. They snubbed you, huh? Pointed fingers at you. Deeper than that, Mr. Shannon. They ousted me for malpractice. You still want my opinion? Tell him no, Slate. A doctor that can't even endorse a cigarette. Tell him no. He's all we've got, sailor. The dart that was thrown into the lovely shoulder of Mr. Val was immersed in a native poison. Brewed by the natives, held close by the natives. Almost sacred to them. See, I'm flattered. Sacred poison's just for me. You'll grow weaker by stages, Mr. Val. The drowsiness you feel now, the first symptom. After that, a lassitude, a, a lethargy. No, it won't happen that way. You'll see to it, huh, Barton? It's out of my hands. It's a native poison. And the antidote is a native one, too. You can get it. And die for my trouble? <laughs> no. That's reserved for Miss Duval. For killing Alice's husband, the Master Ramsey, remember? Get out. Your death doll, Miss Duval. Hug it close to you. It may bring you comfort. <laughs> You 
do it so gently, Slate. The damp cloth on your lady's brow. Quiet. She's asleep. So gently. I envy her. I told you she's asleep. Keep quiet. Good. The things I need to say to you should be whispered. Whisper them to me outside. Anywhere you want. Right here in the hall, where I can hear Sailor if she calls out to me. She's dying, Slate. Before long, she won't even be able to shape your name on her lips. Off the dime, Alice. What's so important indeed whispering to me? Look through this window. The plantation. From that cliff there to the east, it stretches out below you like like a kingdom, an empire. Gives you goosebumps, huh, kid? Go there, Slate. Look at it. Let it lie at your feet. Because it's yours. You're gaining on me, Alice. What good is a dead girl to you, Slate? Well, she could make a nice memory. And I could wipe the memory out of your eyes. Off your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Well, I get to that cliff. Lamb will take you there. On horseback. A kiss to seal the pardon, sleep. Now, don't rush me, kid. Let me look over the farm first, huh? <laughs> How do you like it, Mr. Shannon? Look down and consider it. Yeah, quite a plantation. But it really doesn't impress you, does it? What's to impress? From up here, all I can see is swamp and tobacco plants. What does a man do here? Take a hot bath in the swamp and roll himself a cigarette in a grocery bag? Don't shake a finger at it. You might inherit it. Did you slip that long, thin ear of yours under the door, Barton? Alice is susceptible to you. What about you? It's a shame about me. I love Alice. Uh, let's dismount, Mr. Shannon. There's something I want to show you. Whoa, whoa. All right. Oh, yeah. whoa, whoa. Oh, what do you want to show me? Mr. Shannon. It's on your mind, Doc. I love Alice. You excite her. Yeah, I learned by mail. What do you want to show me, Doc? Uh, yes. Down there. See? To the left, those unpainted huts. The natives live there. All I see is swamp. There, behind that small rise. There, Mr. Shannon. <laughs> You're out of your mind. I love her. I love her. I'll take it easy. I'll kill you. You got to die. I... You are. Sure you love her, Doc. But you didn't have to die for her. <laughs> You should be lying down, Mr. Val. What? You look drowsy. You should be lying down. What do you want here? Don't exert yourself. Can I do something for you? Yes. Yes, you can. That water pitcher there on the table. Why don't you get it? Don't you have strength enough? You're kidding. It's just that I'm not used to drinking water from a glass. You're going to die, Miss Duvall. I'm sorry for you. This place is a paradise, but there'll only be Slate Shannon to enjoy it. Slate been giving you the business, dearie? Has he? Slate? He... Yes. Go on, Miss Duvall. Slate... Looks like, uh... Hello! You there! You with the drum! What's the matter? Don't you like to talk to a man and a horse? All right. How about now? To a man not on a horse. Now, look. The only reason I rode down here was... To... Oh, what reason? I've been looking for you, Fuego. For what reason? To save a girl's life. Soon she will belong to death. Now, you can help her. And why? She had nothing to do with killing Ramsey. It was his wife and that doctor. The doctor? Uh, there's no use asking him. He's dead. It was seen. That of you and the doctor. I'm trying to make you understand. The master Ramsey was good. Now, look, you've got to believe me. Sailor had nothing to do with Ramsey's dying. Chunga! Rika! Hey, what is this? They call your boys off. You could die now. And the swamp would never return you. 
Now, you will go with us. Fuego, what are you doing with Mr. Shannon? In the space. Okay. Okay, Fuego. I got the idea. What happened to you, Flint? Your workman worked me over. Let me hold you. Slade, I told you not to try to leave me. Get away from me. All right. Where's Lynn? Dead. Native? Me. Slipped out of my hands. That's good for us. It makes it all so simple. Lynn was going to be a problem. Now Lynn isn't anything. You're hurt, Slade. I can take care of your hurt. Now just sit over there and relax. You'll see how well I can take care of it. You'll see. Uh, I heard voices. I... I came in here to see if they were mine. Sailor. Sailor. Your face is burning up. Slate? Yes, Slate? Sure. Sure, it's Slate. Are you going to be all right? You should be lying down. Here, I'll carry you to the couch. Don't go away from me, Slate. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> Shut up. Don't go away from me, Slade. <laughs> Don't you know that girl is dying? Shut up. Well, this is the first time you've touched me, Slade, and I like it. I like it. <laughs> Don't you know what's happening to us? Please, Slade, don't take your hands away. Those natives. We're prisoners here. What did you tell them? I told them you killed your husband. They didn't believe you. Look what they've done to you and to her. And to you. You can't get out of here either. You're crazy. I can go out there. Go ahead. All right. You see, Slade? What's wrong, Alice? You afraid of knives tossed at you? It's a native game, mumbly peg. But they think she killed my husband. Maybe I changed their minds. You fool, you could have had it all. You could have had me to praise everything. I'm choosy, so kill me. They'll do it. Here, Alice. Here's what came through the window. Um, a stuffed doll. Your face, your clothes. With a pin in its heart. I'll get a gun. Gun like... He was... He hit it. He kept it from me. Let me think. Let me think. Oh, I know. I remember. I know what it is. He is... I'll kill them, all of them. Out of my way, Sailor, I'll kill you where you stand. You'll die. You'll die. I'll kill you like I killed him. No. No. Not tonight. Right through the heart. Slate, Shannon... Whatever you're going to do to me, Fuego, I want to be with Sailor. This we know. That is why I have come to cure her. To give her this. So that you may go away from here together. Patio. You know you should still be in bed. I can't stay in bed. I feel too good. Being home did that to you, huh? You're taking care of me, did that. I thought you got sailor. A doll. Look at it. Mm. Looks like me. How oh, cute. I did over a few features. Where'd you get it? Made it. Out of some hay, an old coconut shell, and a burlap bag. And what's this sticking in his heart? A safety pin. For what? To keep you safe. Come here, Slate. Hmm, fellow would never know you'd been sick. Welcome home, sailor. And so our 
our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. And then place, nice bed for your body, good food for your face. <laughs> That's a philosophy that should be spread around, King. True, Lady Sailor, but uh, in Shannon's place tonight, there are not many philosophers. You turn on the neon side outside, King? <laughs> yes, Mr. Slate. Are you happy now, Sailor? You convinced me to put up a neon sign out front. You said customers would flock to the place. How do you like that? A new neon sign with the biggest arrow in Havana. King, go out and make sure that arrow is pointed in the right direction. You better do it, King. We're too close to the harbor to take chances. There'd be a lot of wet tourists if... Here comes a dry one. Yeah. Looks warm, too. Hello. I'm looking for Mr. Shannon. I'm Mr. Val. I'm... Is that you, Alice? Yes. What are you doing in our room, Glenn? Your husband invited me. He got lonely waiting for you. Asked me to play cribbage with him. I did. His favorite game. The game for the old. Where is he? Asleep in the next room. It was too much for him, the game, being without you. He tires easily these days, doesn't he, Alice? That's a wise observation, not a doctor's. You always refresh my reasons for adoring you. Thank you, Lynn. The way you keep calling me doctor when you knew I was branded for malpractice. Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. The thing to consider when you've got to sleep is the bed not narrow, is the pillow deep. And you wake up in the morning, breakfast in Havana, with cereal do they serve a fresh banana. I offer this suggestion so that you will know that if you're ever in Havana, the place to go is the hotel known as Shannon. I handle his business. Is there something I can do for you? Ow. Oh. I'm Slate Shannon, Miss... Uh... Mrs. Ramsey. I've heard you have a boat. That's right. The Bold Venture. And I've heard it for hire. With me in it. I'm cabin boy. I'll give you $200 to take us to the pot of swamps. My husband owns a tobacco plantation there. There'll be my husband, me, and Dr. Barton. Sounds all right, doesn't it, sailor? I don't know. Mrs. Ramsey looks like she hasn't finished talking yet. There's only one thing more to say. My husband always wished to be buried on a hummock in the pot of... See? I told you to listen, Slate. My husband's in a coffin. My husband's dead. <laughs> 